I'm making a game inspired by Mario Kart, Kirby 64, and Diddy Kong Racing. And in this devlog, we'll be making some major changes to the item system. But first, I'd like to introduce you to a new character Josue and I have been working on for a while now. Meet Nash. Nash is a bodybuilder, entrepreneur, and a celebrity. He attributes his astonishing muscular growth to his nutritional supplement brand, Mega Muscle, and his diet of raw meats. Some critics have called Mega Muscle useless and have doubts about the legitimacy of his all natural physique. Rumors suggest the supplements actually responsible for his explosive muscle growth may be of the performance enhancing variety. I have never doped. Nash rejects all allegations of illegal substance usage, though it certainly would explain his tail shrinkage and notoriously short temper. I'm going to pass it off to Hostway to talk a bit more about the character design process. Nash was actually the first character that I started designing when I joined. I already had a good vision of the character when Solomon described that he wanted a hulking and brash muscle head. I felt that a mouse, known for its meekness, would be a fun contrast for the character. I kind of wanted to make a roided out Mauser from the Mario series. Shape language and silhouette are important aspects of any character design. I wanted the shapes of Nash's body to really exaggerate his bulk, so I used very thick and blocky shapes to start building up his form. His arms are big and his head even bigger, and you can thank Solomon for suggesting the exaggerated jawline. It gives Nash a unique characteristic, especially after I ripped off Donkey Kong's design for Nash's eyes. Nash's small waist and legs not only help exaggerate his upper half, but it also creates a unique silhouette. Meaning, if I blackened out Nash's form, you'd be able to distinguish him from the other characters. I wanted Nash to be a prickly character, so spikes and sharp edges are also an aspect of his design. I developed his sideburns to give a more distinct shape for his head, and his patch of head hair was designed to reflect the hair loss from his alleged use of performance enhancement drugs, or uh, supplements. So we do have three characters in the game now, and at the moment all characters handle exactly the same, but soon we'll be experimenting with parameters like acceleration, top speed, and turning to help differentiate them. You could certainly see a character like Nash having slower turning than a small character like Max. Okay, so onto the item system. What do these new item boxes do? What are these different icons and why are they different colors? Well, these new item boxes actually contain machines. Well. Uh, pieces of machines. Well, each box has a single piece of a machine and... Actually, let's back up for a moment. How did we get to machines and robots? I thought this was a game about skiing. Well, it is about skiing, but it also has a lot of robots. Hear me out. Josue and I have been doing a lot of world building since the last devlog, and I'm super happy with where we're at. We ironed out a lot of kinks in the story, and even after many, many attempts, have a proper, exciting ending. Now, I'm obviously not going to share everything we've worked out, but I can tell you that the reclusive tech billionaire figure who has invited all these competitors to his exclusive event is a founding engineer of a massive robotics company. We'll call them Mechanico. Imagine Boston Robotics meets the scale and ego of Apple. This company is always trying to please shareholders by pushing out bleeding edge robotics with the most advanced AI. And we wanted these robots to have a distinctive visual style. When brainstorming on Mechanico's design aesthetic, I was drawn to old computers from the late 70s and 80s. The machines felt crude and bulky, but playful with its angles and shapes. Given that the game takes place on slopes, I naturally came across land survey equipment, which also helped influence the cold and industrial aspects of the designs. Solomon wanted me to find ways to introduce Mechanico's influence on the world, and I started with the ski lift design. In the main building, we have a larger form containing what is essentially a giant motor, pulling the gondola cable. While next to it, the observation window is referencing an old computer monitor. The gondolas also feature mechanical properties, such as the gear on the roof and the wind-up key on the back. It's all completely functionless. Doesn't actually work, but it looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Lastly, the pylons where the cables connect double as posts for mounted cameras. Who or what is watching you is yet to be revealed. I've spent a decent amount of time modeling characters now, but the ski lift was my first experience doing some serious hard surface modeling, which is a completely different workflow, but I've found to be a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time placing creases for metal plates and screws in Substance Painter. So how I implemented this whole ski lift system is that each tower has a reference to the next tower in the list right here. 
If it has a valid next tower reference, it will connect its own cables to the next tower. This goes all the way until we reach the ski lift building. I can even adjust the bend in all these cables if I want to. The building actor then traverses the whole length of the cable and builds a giant path for all the carts to travel down. Inevitably, it didn't work perfectly right away. Small bugs in my construction script would tie my cables in giant knots. This wasn't quite the passenger experience I had imagined. Eventually, I did work out all these bugs, and it was great seeing the whole system in action. We've got some interesting plans for the surveillance cameras on top of the towers, but more on that in the next video. Josue also had some concept art for these heatsink modules. They have these cables that I can manually place that kind of root them into the mountain. Reusable components like this not only look nice, but also help the level feel less static. I'll let Josue talk about future plans for environment design. We have tons of ideas for the next devlog, especially on how we are going to further develop the environment of the game. What if the snowy mountains were being used to cool down massive computers? What are the ecological ramifications of that? Who could be behind all this? The answer to that question might lie with whoever, or whatever, is riding in the Zeppelin. This mysterious blimp tends to hang out at every race, broadcasting advertisements, race footage, or potentially even dropping down items for our players. I wanted the design to reflect the shape of an atom bomb, fashioned with propellers and a jet engine. As I mentioned before, I've only recently learned more about hard surface modeling, but it's been a nice change of pace. It's a lot of simpler shapes, so I can get through these designs much quicker. I try to keep the triangle count in mind, though, and constantly have to remind myself that many of these models will be really far away most of the time. Speaking of triangle count, one thing I'm particularly proud of are these baked details on the cabin area. Instead of using thousands of additional triangles to model out features like the door and the window frame, I've baked all these high resolution details into textures, and this allows me to make something pretty low poly look like this. Honestly, I get weirdly excited about the texture baking process. I was gonna add a whole two minute section on it here, but I think I'll spare you guys this time. Okay, so now that we've established this robotics theme, we can finally talk about the item crafting system. So what are these machine parts I mentioned earlier? Well, this new system was actually inspired by an N64 game Josue and I talked about in our first meeting. Kirby and the Crystal Shards. In the game, Kirby can inherit one of seven abilities by swallowing different enemies. These abilities can then be combined together to form more powerful abilities. For instance, Fire plus Rock gives you the Volcano ability, and Lightning plus Rock gives you an Electric Boulder. Lightning plus Spike powers give you an Electric Thorn. I've always found this game mechanic very exciting. We talked about the idea at the time and how it would work in a racing game. Actually, I think Diddy Kong Racing has a light version of something like this. Collect one green balloon and you get an oil slick ability. Collect two green balloons and it becomes an explosive mine. And then three green balloons gives you a bubble trap. Though you can't combine different types of balloons. So we thought, what if we took the Kirby 64 crafting system, but each type of item was actually a part of a machine that could be combined with other parts to form new enhanced machines. This would be a drastic change to the mechanics of the game, but it felt like an exciting way to add more strategic depth to the standard Mario Kart formula. So how would it look in practice? I spent some time redesigning the UI to help. Instead of giving you random items, each crate is clearly labeled with the machine type that it provides. Here you can see as I run into the red crate, I'm given one explosive machine type. This is the type of machine, but down below in the big square, you can see the actual ability I can use. One explosive machine type and one empty slot gives us a new item called the Bomb Buddy. Simply press the right shoulder button while skiing to throw the bomb. But if we want to get a little more distance with our throw, we can throw the Bomb Buddy while jumping. Finally, we can trigger the ability while reverse skiing to perform a light backwards throw. Upon hitting the snow, the Bomb Buddy sets off a timer, and before long, it explodes, knocking out all players in its blast radius. Of course, the Bomb Buddy will also explode on impact with any skier, so a well-aimed throw can take out other players without all the weight. And the backwards throw is ideal for when you're more worried about those coming up behind you. It's also worth noting that these bombs can be just as deadly to yourself as they are to others, so you've got to be a bit careful where you throw. The next machine type we'll talk about is the green box, the rocket-powered machines. One rocket-powered machine with one empty slot gives us the butane boost ability. 
This one's quite simple, as I think a lot of the level 1 machines will be. Simply press the right shoulder button to trigger rockets that pop out of your skis and drastically increase your acceleration. I actually made this animation as a prototype before Josue designed the butane canister version, so the visual is a bit out of date, but the concept will remain the same. On top of increasing acceleration, the boost also temporarily increases your max speed, so you can reach higher speeds than possible through normal skiing. And uh, don't ask me what it does when reverse skiing because I really haven't figured that out yet. But let's say I save my butane boost and then I also collect a bomb buddy. And here's where things get interesting. A rocket powered machine plus an explosive type machine gives us... Look familiar? A robot penguin missile. The new and improved penguin missile is one part explosive device and one part rocket powered missile. The sparks coming out of its ass and the giant plumes of snow it kicks up really adds to the terror factor of these little demons. And I think now that they're level 2 items, it's okay to make them a little stronger. So I cranked up their heat seeking abilities a little bit. I think item combinations like this will open up a lot of strategic depth and make deciding which crate to grab a much more interesting decision. For example, say there's a level with a large gap that is way too big to jump over normally, but players who plan ahead and manage to collect two rocket-powered machines can use a jetpack item to cruise over the gap and save huge time. The jetpack is just one of the many new machines we have planned. This grid represents the different combinations of machine types, though half of them are repeated since the order of the machines doesn't matter. The different machine types are explosive, rocket-powered, freezing, heating, and artificial intelligence. Now these are still in the concept phase, so if you have any ideas about how these combinations should work, let us know in the comments below. But what if you already have two types and you collect another? Well, the new type overrides the type on the left. We'll call this the primary slot. But what if I want to swap out the explosive type for the freezing type instead? By pressing the left shoulder button, I can swap the primary and secondary slots. Now if I swap before I run through the box, I will get a freezing rocket combination instead of a freezing explosive. And there are still other questions to be answered like, can you discard a machine type so you can use the single variant? But we'd like to get proper playtesting before we over-engineer anything. So there's a lot of work to do implementing the rest of the items in the game and I'm pretty excited to get to work on these. We'll also be putting a lot of effort into level design in the next couple months and really filling out this level with all sorts of machines and the kind of detailed environment assets you'd expect from a Mario Kart game. All of this is in an effort to create a nice vertical slice of the game and hopefully give you guys an idea of what the final version of the game could look like. This vertical slice is also critical in helping us apply for grant funding, which is a top priority right now. After applying for funding, we'll be putting all our efforts into the first playable demo, which I don't have a date for, but thank you everyone for being patient. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam, subscribe here on YouTube, and join the Discord, where Host Wei and I are hanging out every day. So yeah, until next time.